Hey guys, my name is Aaron. Welcome to 2016 3D Studio Max Perspective Matching. Today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how to do perspective matching and the benefits of doing so. Alright, so here in your perspective window, I apologize for that sound, they're, they're doing uh, some car repair next door. Um, you're going to hit in your perspective window here, you are going to go to your um, views, viewport background, configuration, or hit Alt V. In your Alt-B, you're going to go to Use These Files, Use, and what we're going to do is we're going to match the bitmap that we're going to select that we grabbed online. Now in this case, I'm going to go find my file, I'm going to find my file which was on my desktop, and I'm going to just choose it right, uh, where is it, right here, and I'm going to hit Apply to Active View and hit OK. Now you will see here, if I go to Perspective View, and I'm going to enlarge this in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see that I have my perspective view here and you can see that I have my grid. Now my grid can be moved around and it's also going to be you know, using the alt middle mouse but I can move this and kind of guesstimate. But the problem becomes is when I make a plane for example like this and let's just make a box in the create tab and bring this up. If I hit F9 on my keyboard to render this out you'll see that there is no background here. We have to configure this again in our render output so that we, we can see this in the display window. Now again under views, viewport, viewport background, that's why we're seeing this custom image right here in this background right here but not in our others. How do we do this to show up in our render view? Well you gotta go to rendering environments right here or hit 8 on the keyboard and when you click this what you will see here is you're gonna see this environmental maps section right here where it says none you're gonna select none and you're gonna load a bitmap image right here. Under loading the bitmap image you're going to navigate to the same image that you had on your desktop which was right here for me and you're going to see that loading up. Now when I hit F9 again this time you're going to see the image loads but it loads incorrectly. A lot of you guys start to wonder why is this happening? What's going on? Well what's happening is it's doing an environment map and the environment map is like a sphere around your object. It's kind of like a 360 camera or like a big big globe objects if you're doing something in space. So we need to make this a different shape than a sphere. How do we do that? Well, here we go. In your material editor, which you can find up here in material editor, um, you can go into your uh, browser. What you can do is you take this image and you're going to drag it into your browser just like that. Now it's going to ask you to do an instance or a copy. You want to do an instance because it's going to refer to this image map which is in your plane view. So I'm going to hit OK. And when it opens up, you'll see that it is in a spherical position, right? If you double click on this, you'll see that it's an environment map and the type is spherical. So you need to change this to screen. When you change it to screen, now it will show in the correct viewport. And when you hit F9 on your keyboard, it will show correctly in your viewport like this. Now, I know this is just quickly set up here for you, but we're going to correct it to make sure it's perspective matching. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the hammer tool right here where it says utilities and I'm going to go down to perspective matching. Under perspective matching I'm going to go to view show vanishing lines. You will see the save frame show up here and you'll see these green and yellow and blue lines show up here. When I click on them I'm going to select this here and I'm going to go down to match my lines as best I can with this viewport here. I'm going to take these lines I'm going to match them up sort of like that. Maybe bring this one I think about here to like there and I don't really have any vertical lines but I'm gonna try to sort of guesstimate that this is uh, kinda like this and uh, bring this one here. I should have taken a better picture but I didn't for the sake of time. But generally speaking this should be the general perspective view of what, uh, what our frame looks like. It should be something like this. Okay. So once that's done, you can shut this off, hiding the vanishing lines and hiding perspective. Once you like what you see here, once you like what you have, you're going to hit Control c to create a camera. Notice it's going to change up here, Control c See right there it has changed. Now, if I hit F9, again, my, it looks, starts to look a little better, but it's not receiving any shadows. So what we can do now is to add shadows to our effect. Now we're going to go to Create, Lights. I'm going to go to down here standard lights and we're going to add an area omni um, light that's right here. I'm going to just drop it in the scene and then we're going to move it going upwards in this direction just to give it up and uh, out of the way and you will see a shadow map scene that is like that. Now 
look what happens when I render this out. You see that the shadow is there, but it's being clipped by this area. I want to hide this area, and I'm going to show you how to do that next. The next thing you do is hit M on your keyboard to get, to get back into your material editor. And what we're going to do is if you go down just a little bit, you're going to see this material matte shadow reflection area. If you drag that in here, okay, what you can do is you take this map and you're going to attach it to the camera map background. So what's going to happen is this picture is going to be mapped to the background or attached to an object that you have in your scene. And which object do I want? I want the flat surface, so I'm going to drag it to this one. It turns gray, but if I hit F9 on my keyboard, you'll notice that it matches beautifully with my background here, and it also receives the reflections, uh, the, the, the shadows here. But see how it's only getting there? It's because of the fact that my screen, my, uh, my plane is not as long. So I can select that plane, go to modify, and I can extend the width of this plane and or move it a little bit further uh, so that way it can cover my texture and then hit F9 again and you'll see that it does in fact grab the full shadows there and it looks as if my block is on my desk which it really isn't and this is how they do a lot of feature effects like they do in Toy Story or you know you can have a character swing on board and then do a cutscene to another thing so I hope you guys enjoyed this quick clip there my name's Aaron, this is 3D Studio Max 2016, perspective matching and shadow matching and uh, matting, uh, matting for you guys. All right, take care, thanks a lot so much, and enjoy your day.